So welcome back to the, our online lecture series on textile effluent treatments. So in the previous videos we saw about the various process of textile uh, processing. We saw the various characteristics of water coming from out from the textile effluent as textile mills. And uh, in today's video we'll be seeing about the various secondary treatment methods uh, that are present for treating the effluents and uh, we will be seeing a, a trickling filtration in detail. So the main purpose of secondary treatment is to remove the BOD that is all the organic content present in the uh, wastewater which is coming from the primary clarifier. So this removes BOD, COD and toxicity and which is obtained by the action of bacteria under uh, pH or in the range of 6 to 9 and under suitable uh, nutrients, organ, oxygen and temperature. So this secondary filter, uh, secondary treatment can be classified or the methods in secondary treatment are as follows. That is first is trickling filtration, then activated sludge process, then we have aerated lagoon and we have secondary sedimentation process, we have anaerobic digestion and we also have oxidation pond method of treating the effluent. So in trickling filtration, uh, this is an aerobic method where aerobic bacteria is acted on the uh, wastewater and it oxidizes the organic matter into a stable form. So here the microorganisms are attached to a medium and uh, while the water passes through the medium they act on the organic matter from wastewater. So this system is common to a number of technologies such as uh, rotational biological contactors and packed bed reactors which is also known as bio towers and these systems are together known as attached growth process since the microbes get attached and grows on a medium. So in contrast to this we also have other system which is uh, where microorganisms are suspended in liquid and is known as suspended growth process. So trickling filtration usually consists of a circular or rectangular bed. It is made of well graded gravel media uh, on which the microorganism get deposited and grows. This gravel media may be small stone, PVC, coal, synthetic resin and the size may vary from 40 mm to 150 mm and uh, over this media water is sprinkled at a uniform rate and it is uh, spreaded throughout the bed area in a slowly rotating rear distributor does this work and this wastewater which is the distributed gets trickled down through this media so the filter is arranged in manner that air can enter through the bottom so we may supply an additional air supply through the medium counter current to the effluent flow direction so as a result there will be a formation of gelatinous film which may comprise of bacteria and aerobic microorganisms which is together called as zooglia and it is formed on the surface of the filter medium and it thrives by uh, oxidizing the nutrients in wastewater. So here you can see the typical flow uh, a diagram of the trickling filter where the water enters to the center line and it is uh, spread through the rotating distributor uh, over the media. And the water flows trickles down through the media where microbes are attached to the media. It gets treated and the treated water comes out to the bottom and it is collected separately in a drainage pipe. And it is taken to a clarifier where uh, we may remove some suspended matter uh, in the form of sludge while the treated water is taken for further treatment or disposal. So the trickling filters where uh, organic matter in wastewater is absorbed by the microorganisms and this organism may be anaerobic sometimes there may be anaerobic and facultative bacteria may also be present uh, based on the availability of oxygen so they attach to the medium and they form a biological film or slime layer the thickness of the slime layer may vary from 0.1 to 0.2 m so as the wastewater flow over the medium the microorganisms in the water gradually attach themselves to the rock slag or the plastic medium which we use and it forms a film over them and then they act on the organic matter and break down them into a stable matter and it grows and uh, it forms it, it grows over the uh, media as a slime layer 
so as the layer thickens by microbial growth oxygen cannot penetration penetrate through the medium phase so anaerobic organism or gets developed so as the biological film continues grow it may lose its ability to attach to the media and it gets uh, fall off from the media and this process of falling off of the uh, uh, slime layer from the media is known as lagging so this legged off particles are uh, removed uh, through the uh, drainage section that is we have a separate under drain right for removing the treated water so through uh, with, it goes off with the treated water and it is taken out in the sedimentation tank as a sludge so it goes to the secondary sedimentation tank uh, where we remove this slime layers as suspended matter and then we can see the advantages of this trickling filtration process this process is simple it is reliable and it is also a biological process it is biological organisms it is suitable in areas where areas where there uh, large tracts of land are not available for various other treatment system so it may be uh, the it is effective for treating high concentration of organic matter and this also depends on the type of media adopted and it is appropriate for small to medium sized communities wastewater treatment it may also be applied to industrial wastewater treatment also it rapidly reduces the bod of uh, the applied water the fifth day bod is rapidly reduced due to the oxidation of the biological matter and it is efficient for nitrification units the process is durable the elements were also durable it has low power requirements uh, uh, the technical expertise required is uh, low in case of managing and operating the system. So some disadvantage of the system are uh, the effluent needs additional treatment in order to meet the stringent discharge standards. So we may need some additional treatment methods other than the trickling filtration also. In addition to this also we may need other processes. So the accumulation of the biomass that can uh, retain the aerobic condition and it can impair the uh, trickling filtration performance. It requires regular operation attention and uh, there is a possibility of clogging is high here uh, since there is a growth of biological organisms and it requires low loadings depending on the medium. The flexibility and control are limited in comparison with the activated sludge process. And here there is a problem of vector order and snail problems are also available. Now we can classify this trickling filter based on the rate of filtration as low rate trickling filter, intermediate rate filtering filter, high rate trickling filter and rough fil roughing filter. And here the BOD removal for our low rate filter is 80 to 90 percentage. For intermediate filter it is 50 to 70 percentage. For high rate trickling filter it is 65 to 85 percentage. For roughing filter it is around 40 to 65 percentage. So there is a con uh, there we can see the uh, comparison between conventional and high rate trickling filter. For depth uh, based on depth of filter media the con for conventional trickling filter it varies from 1.6 to 2.4. For uh, high rate trickling filter it varies from 1.2 to 1.8 meters. The size of filter media varies from 25 to 75 mm in case of conventional filter and 25 to 60 mm in case of higher trickling filter. So the land area required is less in case uh, higher in case of uh, higher trickling filter while it is less in case of uh, conventional trickling filter. The cost of operation is also more in trickling in uh, conventional trickling filter and it is less in higher trickling filter. And method of operation is continuous application of water and is less flexible and requires less skilled supervision in case of conventional filtration while in high rate trickling filtration uh, the continuous application is more flexible and requires more careful skillful operation the type of effluent produced is highly nitrified and it is stable in case of conventional trickling filter and the bod is lesser than 20 ppm while in case of high rate trickling filter the effluent is nitrified up to nitrate stage only so it is less stable and the BOD amount is greater than 30 ppm dosing interval varies from 3 to 10 minutes in case of uh, conventional trickling filters while it is less than 15 seconds in 
the hydrated ink filter so it is more or less continuous operation and you may see the filter uh, filter loading values hydraulic loading varies from 22 to 44 ml uh, hectares per day and here it varies from 110 to 330 and organic loading also varies from 900 to 2200 in case of a conventional trickling filter and uh, 6000 to 1000, 18000 in kilogram of BOD per hectameter per uh, filter meter per day in case of uh, high rate trickling filter. So the rate circulation system is not provided in conventional trickling filter but it's always provided in case of high rate trickling filter and the quality of uh, secondary sludge formed is black in color highly oxidized with slight fine particles in case of conventional trickling filter and uh, it is brown in color with fine particles and not fully oxidized in case of high rate trickling filters so you may see the single stage recirculation process flow diagram in the first case and the second stage we can see the two stage uh, recirculation process so here in a single stage process there is only one trickling filter and the recirculation is done after the secondary clarification the water is taken off to the primary clarifier while in second uh, two stage process following primary clarifier there will be a first stage trickling filter followed by a secondary clarifier the first recirculation is carried out immediately after the trickling filter and it is carried off to the recirculation is done till primary clarifier uh, after secondary clarifier there is second stage trickling filter and followed by a second second stage secondary clarifier and here recirculation is done again to the secondary trickling filter so recirculation improves uh, the result of filter right uh, so the following reasons are there since it allows continuous dosing of filters and it uh, reduces the fluctuation in flow so the recirculation increases the operational results it also equalizes and reduces the loading and it increases the efficiency of our filter so there is a longer contact period between bacteria and our, and our uh, effluent water so this uh, increases the biological oxidation process and uh, since due to re recirculation the influent remains fresh all the time and also it helps in reducing order fly nuisance comparatively uh, with, uh, with the process without recirculation process. So we have seen about the trickling filtration process, we saw about the secondary treatment processes, the methods adopted in secondary treatment and uh, here we saw about trickling filtration process then we saw the classification of filters we saw the comparison of filters and we also saw about the recirculation of wastewater in trickling filter so in the next video we will be seeing about the activated sludge process here we may end uh, this uh, today's video thank you